ladies and gentlemen and kids, please welcome your host for today's show. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. How y'all doing today? Well, we're glad to have you. Welcome to Eagle Mountain Sanctuary. And of course, welcome to Wings of America. And what we would like to do today is to bring you very close to our birds, probably closer than you've ever been before. Hopefully, you will leave our show with a better understanding of how you can help them in your own backyard. Let me welcome Frankie to the stage, folks. This is Frankie. Frankie is an adult Eastern Screech Owl. He is full grown, he's not a baby. Screech owls come in a variety of different color phases, from the reddish brown like you see here, to a gray color. And the screech owls are actually misnamed because they don't screech at all. They make more of a wavering whistle that goes something like this. Now one of the greatest threats to these guys are our vehicles at night, folks. So when you're driving down the roads at night, keep a watchful eye. And remember, we share the roads with some very delicate and fragile creatures, like Frankie, who I think has done a great job. What do y'all think? You know, have you ever been sitting on your back porch in the evening or maybe even watching a scary movie and you heard a sound that goes something like this? Woo, 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 woo. Chances are you've heard the sound of one of the most powerful predators that roams our wood at night, the incredible great horned owl. Folks, Alice is a female great horned owl. Now the great horned owl, Alice has a, a cataract in one eye and also she is an imprinted bird, so this means she can't be released back to the wild. The great horned owl have feet that are as big as they are powerful. They've been able to seize and kill large prey, such as raccoons and possums, and are one of the only birds of prey that actually dine on a skunk. Also, they nest in December and January. They usually choose a large stick nest from an old hawk, or they'll pick the hollow of a tree. Now, they raise their young in that nest, and the young stay with the parents for many, many months until they become well-versed in the art of hunting. This is Valentine, and Valentine is a barn owl. They get their name from the simple fact they like to live where, guys? That's right, what else lives in barns? Mice, absolutely. Now barn owls will also live in other man-made structures such as abandoned buildings, silos, or even nest boxes. As Valentine just passed over your head, you did not hear any sound from those wings. And this is because they have very soft ridge feathers on the front leading edges, and it allows the air to pass through completely silently so they can sneak up on their very keen-eared prey. This is little Bo. Bo is an American kestrel. Some people still call this little bird a sparrow hawk. They can be seen sitting on power lines, bobbing their long tails, or even hovering over a field. The males differ from the females in that they're bluish gray wings, and the female's wings are reddish brown. If you look at the little lines underneath his eyes, those are called mustache marks. Most falcons have these. Football and baseball players put something called blackout underneath their eyes to keep out reflected sunlight. These work in the same manner for the little kestrel. Right over here for you. How you doing? What's your name? Ashley. You having fun in Dollywood? <laughs> Excellent. Well, let me ask you a question. Do you think the birds can see in color? Yes. Excellent. There's a lot of people out there that don't think birds can do it. But Ashley's right. They can. So you're gonna help me prove it. Here is four pink eggs. What I want you to do is we're gonna start right here and you're gonna put one pink egg down on each one of these stumps next to the colors, okay? Go for it. So like I said, what we're gonna do is prove the birds can see in color. Because the next bird that's gonna come out here is gonna come out and go on an Easter egg hunt. Please welcome the National Bird of Mexico, the Cresta Cara Cara, Benita. In the wild, she would not be hunting for Easter eggs. She'd actually be using her long legs to dig under rocks, bark, and logs to eat just about anything she can find. Grubs, slugs, insects, even other birds. She's what we like to call an opportunistic feeder. She is one of the biggest hams on our show, so she poses for her photos. Before she says adios, hasta la vista. This bird is found by the thousands up and down roadways and interstates, perching on power lines and power poles. They're commonly called chicken hawks, but it's a name they really don't deserve because they rarely eat chicken. They're more of a rodent eater. 
correctly called the Red Tail Hawk. This is Jessie. Jessie's job today is to rearrange a few hairstyles. Good job, Jessie. Red Tail Hawk gets its name from the beautiful brick red tail that you can see. This is the only common characteristic of the Red Tail Hawk. All these other colors all over Jessie vary bird to bird like the human fingerprint. And I'm sure that you guys have probably heard the term Hawkeye or Eagle Eye. This definitely does refer to Jessie. She has incredible eyesight. She can spot a moving mouse from a half a mile away. That would be like us being able to read a newspaper headline. From here to the beginning of Dollywood's main entrance, they have long, broad wings, which allow them to soar over open plains for hours in search of their prey. I would like to introduce Cherokee. Cherokee is a 21-year-old female golden eagle who comes from Death Valley, California. Some hikers found her and hand raised her. She became human imprinted, and now she's unable to survive in the wild. The golden eagle gets its name from the golden feathers on the back of its neck. Found throughout the northern hemisphere from lonely mountain peaks to arid valleys in the United States, they are primarily birds of the west. The golden eagle is the master of its environment. It embodies the definition of magnificent. A strong flyer, they're known to delight in soaring strong gale force winds, and they're able to dive at speeds of 270 miles per hour. Cunning, intelligent, bold. When pursuing prey, they dive out of the sun and use stealth tactics to surprise their quarry out in the open, cutting off their escape. The golden eagle possesses grace and grandeur that no other bird can match. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our living symbol of what America stands for. Freedom, courage, strength, spirit, and independence, the bald eagle. Folks, on his behalf, thank you very much. I'd like to introduce to you Osceola, a 27-year-old male bald eagle that was shot about 25 years ago. It severely damaged his left wing, and amputation was required just to save his life. You know, it's hard to believe that anyone could be so mean or cruel to shoot a beautiful bird like this. Federal laws prohibit the killing of any bird of prey, with extreme penalties for anyone killing an eagle. And you might ask where the bald eagle gets its name. Well, it's obviously not bald, but bald in this sense refers to an old English word that just means white-headed. They get their white head and tail when they're about five years old. Prior to this, they are a brownish colored bird. And this bird's other name is the American Eagle. It's been our nation's symbol since 1782. A resident of North America, they abide near large rivers, lakes, and oceans where they catch their favorite food, which is fish. Now they'll also eat waterfowl, various mammals, reptiles, sometimes even carrion. Our non-releasable breeding pairs here at Dollywood, they help contribute to our wild population. And we are very proud to announce as of this year, we have released our 97th bald eagle in the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains. Isn't that great? Thank you very much. You know, this is all in an effort just to repopulate bald eagles in our area. Now, the bald eagles' comeback is in full swing, but you know, in the early 1970s, their numbers dropped. They went down to an all-time low of only 417 pairs in the lower 48 states. This year, because of your help, federal law protection, and the Bald and Golden Eagle Act, their numbers have grown. We now have an estimated, get ready for this, 10 thousand pairs of bald eagles now in the lower 48 states. Isn't that great? You know, it's up to us all to preserve what we have left and to repair what we've damaged. We did not inherit this earth from our parents. We bought it from our children. Thank you. Folks, I'd like for everyone to say hello to Freedom. Freedom is one of our male bald eagles that we recovered from the wild. He was blown from his nest. Some dogs chewed him up a little bit, and they said he would never fly again, but he does not know that. So don't tell him. The last guest coming out is from Africa. 
His name is Friar Tuck, an African pied crow that takes donations for our eagles since we are a nonprofit organization. Now, if you would like to see him do his job, he'll be right up front here. The only thing we would ask is please don't give him coins. We're afraid he might choke on those, but if you'll give him a bill, fold it up one time, stand at arm's length, he'll take it from you and put it. Is that a one? Folks, I've seen him turn down ones, but I've never seen him turn down a five or a ten. So check him out up here with them. We do have bumper stickers.